The solar tracking system you see in this video is an invention that I have patented, and everyone is allowed to use it, this is an incredibly accurate tracker, and has the ability of 180 degrees view of space, in this video, I will focus on the photocell pages, thank you for liking and subscribing to the video, watch the previous and next video to complete the tracker topic, wishing you success. Ebrahim Hashemi Hello my friends. Welcome to the Fixed Focus Program. I am Ebrahim Hashemi, and this is another episode of Fixed Focus Program. And we know that in this case, if light shines from any angle to the smooth surface of the lens, we will have light on the other side. If the light shines horizontally, the light passing through the lens will be on the wall of the tube. But if the light shines perpendicular to the surface of the lens, the focal point is located in the center of the tube, in which case the tube is parallel to the sun's rays. There are several ways to make the system perpendicular to the sunlight. For example, we can cover the inner body with photocell, that this method is not interesting. I have tried different methods to build a tracker. I will show you some of them here. For example, this tracker uses a pyramid system. The work of guiding the system is done by photocells on the pyramid plates. This is also another tracker, which works with the cone plate system. And building a conical system is a difficult task. This tracker is also made with a small lens. That's why its length is short. This is another tracker I have. This tracker works with a step system. This is another large tracker I have. This tracker works with two photocell cones. You have seen a number of different trackers here. I will first briefly describe the pyramid tracker. And then I go to the main tracker, which is already working very well on the system. The tracker on the system is a step tracker. And it will be easy and cheap to build. The two-axis tracker must detect the movement of the fixed focus system in four directions. So the pyramid tracker should have four triangular planes. As you can see, this pyramid tracker has four separate photocell plates. In this figure, it is clear that the four triangular plates form a pyramid. 
The accuracy of the construction of this pyramid depends on your accuracy. In this figure you can see the components of a pyramid track. The part shown with number 5 is a single photocell at the end of the pyramid. And when the focus light hits it, that is, it is a parallel tracker of the sun's ray. Suppose this is a tracker that is to be installed on a fixed focus system. The tracker should be perpendicular to the dish plate. When the lens light hits the bottom photocell screen from above. In this case, the solar dish must move downwards. As long as the light hits the single photocell. And when light hits the top triangular plane. That is, the dish must move upwards. And if the light hits the right, the dish should move to the right. And in the left case, the dish should move horizontally to the left. And if the lens light hits both screens, the dish must move in both directions. In this figure, you can see how to build a pyramid from beginning to end. The photocells of each page must be connected in parallel. In this figure we have four large triangular plates and a small square plate for a single photocell. In the pyramid system, when light hits a single photocell, the system is locked and no longer moves. Until the sun shines and light does not hit a single photocell. The pyramidal system has acceptable accuracy. If building a tracker pyramid system is easy for you, you can trust it. I myself did not use this pyramid scheme on a fixed focus system. And I used a step system that is more accurate than this system. Now if you want to run a pyramid system with this lens and this PVC pipe. First we measure the inside diameter of the pipe. The inner diameter of this pipe is 36 millimeters. In this figure, the value of the base of the triangle is approximately 25.45 millimeters. And the height of the triangle, taking into account the outer edge of the lens, is 60 millimeters. This is a pyramidal system. And you can do this conically. Of course, building a conical system is a bit difficult. And you have to use a conical shape like a funnel. And this pyramid scheme is not a bad system and it is reliable. Well, let's move on to the new stepping system. The pyramid method uses a large number of photocells. And it takes more effort to make. But in the way I want to explain now, the number of photocells is much smaller. And much more accurate. I made a printed circuit board according to the figure. In this figure, the diameter of the center circle of the circuit is approximately 1 centimeter. And the diameter of the printed circuit board is equal to the diameter of the PVC pipe. In this figure, photocells are divided into four groups. Up and down groups and left and right. This circuit accommodates 28 photocells. When the lens is placed on the tube, if light hits the lens from the horizon, an image of light appears on the wall of the tube. Now we can place a series of photocells near the lens. This circular circuit does this for us. From any horizontal direction where light is emitted, a number of photocells related to the same angle are activated. On the other hand, another circular circuit is located at the end of the focal length. To form such a structure, I use a piece of 1 cm PVC pipe. And I will put it behind the lens. Then I put the photocell plate that I prepared before under the tube. After this I will put a 5 cm tube behind the circuit. In this figure, you can see the order of the components. The focal length is exactly 62 millimeters. At the end of the 5 cm tube, I place a circular photocell plate. The main job of this tracker is done by this photocell page. 
and should be at the end of the pipe. It is very important that the photocells in the same group are in the same direction in the upper and lower orbits. For example, the up group should be in the same direction in both circuits. And glue them with a suitable, strong and matte glue, of course, after soldering the communication wires. When the glue dries well, place the flat surface of the lens on the smoked glass. And glue around it. The type of adhesive must be opaque, waterproof and not elastic. Cut the larger pipe according to the required amount and place it on the system. And then we glue it around. An example that has already been made in the same way, I will show you. Two screws and nuts are installed to place it on the dish. An important point is that you must cut the pipes vertically. And this is of particular importance. A simple way to do this is to use an A4 paper, for example. First mark the place of measurement on the pipe. Then wrap the paper around the tube. Do this so that the edges of the paper are exactly on top of each other. And then draw a line on the pipe with a marker. And then we can cut from the pipeline. The wires to be connected to the photocell circuits must be very soft. Examples of wires that have this property are flat wires. In the figure you see, it shows the end photocell circuit. In this circuit, 26 photocells have been used. And the up, down, left and right parts are marked. Let's go to connect the wires to the photocell circuit at the beginning and end of the detector. Well, now the wires are soldered. The output of each photocell page must be five strands of wire. One is common and the other is up, down, left, right. All wires of the same name on the two plates must be connected. Finally, the tracker output will have five wires. The important thing is before you put the parts together all photocells must be tested. Because the photocell may not work due to solder heat. To do this, we first mark the soldered wires with a marker. The common wire with one line and up with two lines and down with three lines as well as the other two. We do this for both photocell pages. Well, to test, First connect the common wire to an ohmmeter probe and the other probe, for example, to the up group. We prepare a piece of cardboard that light does not pass through it then we make a small hole in the middle. We place the hole of this cardboard on each of these photocells. Set the ohmmeter to a factor of 100. If the photocell is healthy, the ohmmeter pointer should be the right size and move like the rest. And if the ohmmeter pointer moves a little, it means that the photocell has a problem and needs to be replaced. It should be noted that we used the smallest photocells available in the market. And it is better to test the photocells before installing them. And select photocells that are in an ohmic range. For accuracy in the cartoon, you can see the exact size of the photocell used in this figure. Another thing we need to do is put a mark in the top-up area and at the edge of the fiber circuit. We do the same for the bottom photocell page. Well, the top photocell plate is located behind the 1 cm tube. 
When we want to put a 5 cm pipe behind it, the wires are annoying. So we have to drill a small piece of the edge of the 5 cm pipe. Of course, be careful not to place the wires in front of the center hole of the photocell circuit. Well, I drew a straight line on the 5 cm pipe. Now when connecting the pieces together, the top point of both photocell plates should be along the pipeline. Accuracy in this work is extremely important. Another very important point is that we first attach the photocell plate with a central hole to the tube. Make sure the up sign is along the pipeline. And then with a paper towel from the outside on the center circle of the page. And now we paint the inside of the tube with matte black spray paint. In fact, there should be no light reflection in the tube. It means a dark room without reflection. And after the paint dries, we look inside the tube so that there is no reflection. If you pay attention, the photocell screen is also reflective. Opaque spray can be used to blur the surface of photocells. Apply the matte spray on the photocell plate and then let it dry. This spray allows light to pass through but blurs the surface. After this, we paste the last photocell page. And remember to matte spray on the front page photocells as well. Then attach the lens with a 1 cm tube. After the adhesives are dry, we cut a piece of pipe with a slightly larger diameter and a suitable size. And we put the built tracker in it. Of course, first we glue the smoked glass to the lens. Foam tape, glue, or Teflon can be used to fill the gap between the large and small pipes. And the space between the two pipes is removed. The size of the large pipe depends on your working conditions. For example, in the sample you see, there are two screws and nuts to connect to the dish. And these two bolts do not interfere with the internal tracker too. Do not forget to use matte and opaque glue. No light other than the lens light should enter the darkroom. For speed and accuracy in the cartoon, you can first use one, two, three adhesives. And then apply the original glue on it. I apologize to you dear ones that the time of the film has increased again. And I could not explain the tracker control circuit in this section. Of course, the tracker is the most important part, and the control circuit can be a simple comparator circuit. In the next program, I will focus on the control circuit. Any part of the video that was not understood leave me a comment so I can respond as soon as possible. My whole effort is to be able to explain all the parts of a fixed focus solar system. I hope the programs have been useful for you so far. So until the next program goodbye.